All right, good morning, good morning, everyone. It is Saturday, November 21st. And here we are crafting away. Uh, my camera's a little bit off here. Just give me a second to tweak this. Sorry for the earthquake. Sherry, what do you use for the camera? How do you hook that up? Um, I have a, a tripod. Yeah. Um, called an Archon mount. Archon, okay. Um, let me, I don't know if you can see me waving at you. I can. Okay. It's this black thing here. Oh, okay. So. And then the camera's a little GoPro or something? Um, I'm just using my phone. Oh, cool, okay. I, I use my phone and I log in um, twice. So I've got my computer logged in as well as my phone logged into the same account. Um, the real key is I make sure with my phone, I do not turn on the sound because otherwise uh, I get feedback. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm so always there, curious. Okay. Thank there, you. That's like my behind the scenes uh, technology feature for today. Uh, yeah. It's a great mount. I know a lot of uh, bloggers, and people on Instagram use this Archon, it's A-R-K-O-N. And uh, it, we could do all kinds of different configurations with that um, horizontal arm. And then Thanks. I can move it up and down as well. So Appreciate the info. My pleasure. Uh, feel free to email me uh, separately if you want a little bit more uh, detail and information. I'm happy to, to share that. There's no secrets. All right, so let's jump into our project of the morning. Um, today we're going to be making a double pocket tarp. And so if there's a pocket here, and there's a pocket here, and it is still actually a card, so you can still open it up and uh, put a message inside or do whatever you uh, wish to put in an actual card. Now, when it's folded down, it is six inches tall, so um, it would not fit in a regular envelope. You'd have to go up to like a five by seven envelope, but it's only four inches wide. So yeah, you probably have to go up to a five by seven envelope to mail it, but I can't, if, if you were mailing it, um, or grab, get out your envelope punch board and make yourself a custom envelope. Um, yeah, it's not quite that standard size, but I really like it um, because you can put so many little things in here. Uh, I've made these in the past with hot chocolate, like a hot chocolate pouch in the back. And then you can put like a Tim Hortons gift card in the front. Or again, you could just tuck another little message inside uh, or a tag or anything like that. Uh, I chose this paper here to do my sample one. This is from the Simple Stories uh, apron strength line um, with the thought that you could put like a Lipton's chicken noodle soup uh, into uh, the pocket if you had a friend who uh, was under the weather or you just wanted to send a nice little get well message. Uh, that would be ideal for that. And like I said, I've often done hot chocolate or um, you could do... Uh, I know you can get those little tubes of um, water flavoring. Uh, anything, any kind of thing you could put in this little uh, pouch here. And it's really super easy. Once you've got the first one done, it really makes a lot of sense. There's a little bit of um, just understanding how the folds happen, which is why I also took just a piece of um, older paper and created myself a template. So once we've done our first one here together today, you may want to do the same thing. And I've just got, you know, fold it this way, tape it this way, and just keep it with your instructions. Um, I can post this on uh, Facebook uh, if you guys want, and uh, just keep that template. So when you go to make it again, you know, six months from now, uh, you're like, well, how does that go together again? You've got your little template to do that. So uh, one last time, if I could please ask everyone to mute your microphones uh, as we get into doing the directions, just to help minimize the background noise. 
And uh, if you have questions though, or if I'm going too quickly, please do not hesitate to unmute and ask. All right, so I did not pre-cut my paper this morning, even though I asked you guys to. So I am going to, I think I'm gonna use this one here. I like the, uh, the wood grain, the barn board here. It is from uh, Cottage Christmas by, I believe it's Fancy Pants. Yep, I'm already trying to read upside down. And it's got this really pretty plaid on the back. If we have time, maybe I'll do a second one using that other Fancy Pants paper. So I'm just going to trim off my advertising strip because we don't need that. And I need to cut my piece so that it is eight inches by 12 inches. So it's already 12, obviously. I just need to cut off four inches to make it eight. All right. So here is my piece that is eight inches by four inches. And I really do feel uh, strongly, it's certainly much easier if your pattern is not directional um, on both sides. And when I may say not directional, um, one of the papers I looked at uh, with the apron strings one actually had little chickens on it. And I thought, oh, that would be so cute if I was putting in a chicken noodle soup. But then when I thought about it, and you can see here on the hearts, on some pieces, the hearts are then upside down or they're sideways. So stripes aren't such a big problem because they can naturally go vertical or horizontal. Uh, but if you have critters or um, something that you really want to stay going in the upwards direction, maybe not a good choice for this particular project. All right, next step is to score our paper. So grab your scoreboard, or if you have a scoring tool on your paper trimmer. I'm going to put my paper in vertically. And horizontally. Gonna, uh, this is vertically because it's going up and down and I'm going to score it at the four inch mark. So score all the way down at the four inch mark like so. I am now going to turn my paper so now it's horizontal, uh, going side by side, and I'm going to score it at the six inch mark. Like so. Did I get that right? There we go. Six inch mark. So essentially, we're scoring it in half on the short side and then in half again on the long side. Give it a good crease. If you've got a bone folder, you can give it a good rub down. Even go the other direction just to give it a good way to move it. All right, I'm just gonna tuck my scoreboard to the side for a second. We are going to come back to it. And I will I'm going to go grab a Sharpie just so I can show you the lines we're going to make. So right now we have our score lines here and here. We do need to make one cut and the cut is going to be, so if we are looking at our paper here, we've got our four quadrants. This line here at the right across on the left hand side to the middle, we're going to cut along that line. Like so. We also have to make two more folds and that's going to be on this corner here and this corner here. So if you get your ruler out or if you've got grid paper like I do, your top corner is going to be three inches, <clears throat> excuse me. So I'm gonna measure over one, two, three, and just put a little tick mark here. And the same thing down from the top, three inches. One, two, three, right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna score to connect those dots. 
make sure you guys can see that. So that's three inches and three inches. In the bottom right hand corner, we're going to do the same thing, but this time it's going to be four inches, not three inches. I see a comment here. So I'm going to measure up one, two, three, four, and put a little tick mark. And the other four should be right at your crease over here. So again, we're going to score along this line here. You don't have to draw these lines. I'm drawing those to show you. Um, if you if you are going to draw it, I would recommend doing it in pencil so that you can erase it. So let me, do I have my scissors here? I do. You know what, I'm gonna do my scoring first. So I'm gonna take my scoring board here. I'm going to find a line. Now on my scoreboard, I have these awesome little tick marks to help me line things up. Grab my tool and I'm gonna do a score line that's following that line from the three inch mark to the three inch mark. Gonna do the same thing over here with my four inch. And as always with scoring, it is certainly, I find it easier to do it lightly and do it a couple of times. If you push too hard, especially if you're using a stylus like this, you could punch right through the paper. So do it lightly, do it a few times, and that will get you your nice crisp score line. Okay, so we've got this score, and we're gonna fold that in like that, and fold it back the other way, and the same on this one here. So the last thing we have to do is take our scissors or our paper trimmer and just cut along this line here. Should just be following your score line, cutting it right to the center. All right, so this is where I'm going to get out my little diagram because it helps me know where to fold. So this is the top. So what we're going to do is we have our piece with the cut. We've got a triangle and a triangle this triangle and let's do it let's do a practice run first before we tape anything down we're going to fold this corner towards us and then when we get to taping we will tape that down just so it doesn't flap but it doesn't have to be super super taped then this panel will fold over and we will tape that down that's going to make our first pocket this corner here, we're gonna fold away from us and then fold up. And now you can see how your two pockets are starting to form. And I don't think I'm along my score line here. There we go. And then lastly, this final flap will fold around the back. And that's what makes it a card. Or if you wanted to make a third pocket, you could absolutely just adhere that down. Sound good, ladies? So I am going to open it all back up. And then we can apply our tape. So I'm just going to put a little bit of tape on the corner here, just so that it sticks down and doesn't flop on me or get caught when the person is uh, pulling whatever goodies you put in those pockets out. So I just put tape just on that corner there. I'm using score tape. Uh, you can use regular tape for this particular part. Whenever I make pocket cards and that kind of thing, I do prefer the score tape just to make sure it all stays together. Um, again, if you're putting little pouches and things, it's gonna start pulling on the seams. 
and you don't want it to pop apart uh, before you have a chance to give it. Okay, so now I've just tacked that corner down. The next place I'm going to put tape is just along this side and this side because when I fold it over, that's going to seal that pocket. So going right to the edge as close as I can get. I'm just going to fold that out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. Right to my fold line. Peel off my tape. And so this one is going to fold over like a book to the right. Now we've got a nice seal. Nothing's going to fall through the bottom. Side is nice and sealed. Everything is great. Our next set of tape, we want this this pocket to fold backwards. So for right now, just fold it backwards. We're now gonna put tape here and along this fold here, because that's now going to fold up and create that second pocket. So we need to make sure we're sealed on both sides. You don't need to seal the bottom because in this case, we've got the fold there. So that is sealing up the bottom for us. So I just need it on my two sides. like so, and all the way to the top. There we go. So now we're going to fold up. And our second pocket is all nice and sealed. We've got our flappy wing here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of tape on the corner to seal that down. And there you go. And lastly, this panel here on the left is just going to fold behind to make your card. So probably what I would do is I would take some white cardstock, create a little uh, rectangle in here so that I can write my message, have that nice little either get well or stay warm and cozy this holiday season. If you've got really nice paper, you maybe don't even need to do any more decorating to this other than maybe throwing a little bit of embellishment on it. Um, like I said, if you wanted to make a, a third pocket, you could absolutely seal this down. I would then probably use a hole punch. I think I had one here. Yep. So what I would probably, if I wanted to make a third pocket, I would probably do this where I'm just cutting a little notch out. And then I can seal it up. When making pockets, the thinner the score tape, the better. The score because it's score tape, it'll be good and sticky and strong. But if it's thin, thin width wise then it gives you lots of room to put stuff in your pocket. Yeah, my score line's a little bit off, but you could absolutely do that where you've got pocket number three, pocket number two, pocket number one. So there you have it. You could wrap ribbon around it. You can, and like I said, perfect pockets. This could be for a chocolate bar and then you could put a hot cocoa and you could put a gift card. But you know what, now that we've made this, I want to see what the stripes look like. 
I mean, this is this is pretty subtle. If you're with me, let's make a second one. Just just cause, cause we've got the time and we're feeling crafty. So let me cut. Excuse me, cut this one down. Never hurts to go over something more than once. So usually an advertising strip is half an inch. go and I need to make this eight I would like to think that you could very easily size this down as well uh, to make it a little bit smaller just by adjusting your measurements you've just got a nice rectangle here and you're literally just doing um, quadrants into that um, for your scoring line. But math is not my strong suit, especially when I haven't had a coffee yet today. So we'll just stick with what we've got. So I'm going to take my eight by 12 piece, put it in vertically, and I'm gonna score at four. Nice and light, rotate it 90 degrees. Score it at six. I'm going to measure my corner at the top left to three inches. Did I have, oh, yeah, I do have that. One, two, three, tick mark. One, two, three, tick mark. And let's do the bottom one while we're here as well. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, right on my score line, perfect. Line it all up and score. Line it all up and score. Fold in, fold back. So I can do my cutting on that score line. Just to the center. There we go. Now the way I've directed you ladies for the first one is that this one is towards, this one is behind. If you want a bit of a different look, there's no reason why you can't do it the other way. It just gives you a different look. So this one's gonna fold over. So this way you've got your square or your stripes matching up on each other. Whereas if you had it the other way, you just see the polka dots. And I really do like how it does that alternating. But if you really like your stripes, we could do that. And then when we fold up, see, I don't like that as much. I don't like where I see the two papers going that way. So I'm gonna go back the other way, that way and that way. So now I have my stripe, my dot, my stripe, my dot. But it's totally a per personal preference and it depends on what pattern paper you've got. So let's find my tape. Now that we know what we're doing, I'm gonna do some of the taping steps at the same time. So tape in my corner. This piece is tape on the side, tape on the bottom. Yeah, that's right. Just had a moment there. 
So this one's going to come towards. This one's going to go to the right. Pocket number one is done. This one, I am doing my two sides. And this one will be taping here. when we get to the other side. So we've got side, we've got side, and what I like about this format is, you know, I've done my little tick marks and if you had drawn a line, if you do it in pencil, you can erase it, but the, for the most part, well, maybe that one would not have, but for the most part, it gets hidden and you don't have to worry about erasing. So just keep an eye on that. But pencil is always a good idea when you're not sure. Okay, so that's going to fold up. So that's going to fold down. And that's going to fold behind. These would make great teacher's gifts if you have to make teacher's gifts or, you know, in this time, especially as some stores are starting or some communities are starting to lock down again. If you have a neighbor or, you know, someone who maybe doesn't isn't able to get out as much, this would make a lovely just little token neighborly gift. So there you have it, ladies. If anyone has any questions. Um, if uh, B is asking, she's left-handed and made it backwards. Which one do we cut? If you were going the other way, I would guess that you would uh, fold it this way, B. Or if you flipped it over, you should be able to get it back to the proper um, direction. I haven't tried making one left-handed, so I will uh, see if I can do that off camera and uh, post when we have an answer. Hope that helps. If anyone has any other questions, then I'm happy to entertain them. Otherwise, we will send you on an outward with your Saturday. It is a little chilly out there, but I'm hoping the sun's going to break out. It's a little gray. Great day for crafting. Love this. Thank you, Sherry. You're very welcome. Thanks, Sherry. It was Thanks, great. Sherry. All right.